Hey there, deep divers. Buckle up, because today we're looking at U.S. elections. But not how you might think. Forget red versus blue. We're diving into the economic engine behind this whole political circus. Think massive rallies. Yeah. Nonstop media coverage. Yeah. Mountains of merch. Mountains of merch. It's crazy. Our sources, the great American political machine, how it works and why it matters, and beyond politics, how elections drive the U.S. economy. Okay. They reveal that this isn't just a political show. It's a financial powerhouse, like something on the scale of the war economy or the entertainment industry. And it's fascinating how both sources highlight the cyclical nature. You know, like U.S. presidential campaigns are kind of like the NBA or the NHL. Interesting. Recurring seasons, star players, diehard fans, right. and of course, constant flow of money. That's a great comparison. Yeah. When you think about the scale of it all. It is. One source actually compares it to the economic and cultural impact of something like the British monarchy celebrations. Wow. Okay. All the pomp and circumstance, mm -hmm. the global attention, the tourism revenue. U.S. elections, they're like their own global spectacle now, don't you think? Absolutely. But it's so much more than just banners and speeches. Right. Beyond politics really digs into those economic mechanics at play. Oh, right. Like the constant fundraising. It fuels this whole complex ecosystem. Uh. You've got your nonprofit organizations, campaign teams, marketing agencies, crafting all those catchy slogans, media outlets reaping advertising dollars, yeah. not to mention all the businesses that pop up around events and rallies. The whole world. It really is. The source even mentions things like speaking fees for high-profile figures, right? which adds another layer to this economic web. Right. It's so fascinating how these seemingly small details contribute to this larger flow of money, yeah. ultimately benefiting a wide range of individuals and industries. And this is where it gets really interesting. All this spending, while it's focused on politics, it basically acts like a stimulus package, right? injecting billions into the economy, creating jobs across tons of different sectors. Yeah. It's almost counterintuitive. We get so caught up in the political horse race, you know, the debates, the scandals. Mm -hmm we often miss the economic reality happening right there beside it. Exactly. And the sources argue that understanding this economic dimension, it's key to grasping the full picture of how U.S. elections work yeah. and how they impact society as a whole. So it's not just about who wins or loses on election day. No. It's about the ripple effects of this massive political machine reverberating throughout the economy, touching the lives of so many people. It makes you think. It really does. It really challenges our assumptions about the role of elections in a modern economy. Like, instead of just viewing it as this political contest, right. we need to recognize it as a powerful economic engine. Yeah, for sure. And here's where it gets even more interesting. The great American political machine. It dives into how this whole system, you know, despite seeming chaotic, it actually contributes to some level of social stability. Okay. That seems kind of counterintuitive. Right. All that fierce competition, back and forth media frenzy, how does that lead to stability? Oh, the source argues that it's this process, the channeling of public discourse and anxieties through the election cycle. It's like a pressure valve for societal tensions. Hmm. So instead of tensions building up and maybe erupting in more disruptive ways, mm -hmm. they're allowed to kind of play out within this structured framework of the election. Exactly, like this giant nationwide debate where you have people from all walks of life with totally different beliefs and opinions. They come together and engage in this process, yeah. arguing, debating, expressing frustrations, but it's all happening within a system that allows for that peaceful transfer of power uh, and the renewal of democratic processes. It's like a safety valve on a pressure cooker, you know, <laughs> keeping things from boiling over. Right. And the source even makes this historical comparison highlighting how this system has proven resilient, even during periods of intense social division, like back in the Vietnam War era. Exactly. And then mm. this stability, it fosters a more predictable and attractive environment for businesses and investors, oh, interesting. which further boosts the economy. So it's like this cycle, the political process with all the noise and fury yeah. contributes to an environment that's actually good for economic growth and prosperity. Makes you wonder, though, does the U.S. model have any relevance on a global scale? Yeah. Could other nations benefit from this approach? Or is it just too deeply ingrained in American culture and history? Well, Beyond Politics actually explores that. It contrasts the U.S. system with other models, like China's more centralized approach. Right. And it's complex, no easy answers. But on the one hand, a more controlled system might seem efficient. Yeah. But as the Sun points out, suppressing dissent, 
Sometimes that leads to unpredictable upheavals. Oh, right. Which can have huge economic consequences. So the U.S. system, even though it seems chaotic, mm-hmm. it might actually be more stable in the long run. That's the argument. It raises all these questions about the trade-offs between control and freedom, efficiency and resilience. Right. It challenges how we think about a stable political system. Yeah. And how that stability leads to economic success. Exactly. It underscores how important it is to understand the nuances of different political systems and how they impact economic development. You know, there's no one size fits all solution. For sure. Each system has its own strengths and weaknesses. I think that's a key takeaway for our listeners. There's no easy answer, no simple solution. It's about recognizing the complexities yeah, and having these thoughtful discussions about the trade-offs. Absolutely. And learning from different models, both the successes and the failures, mm-hmm. you know, as we try to create societies that are both politically stable and economically prosperous. To both sources. Yeah. They touch on the role of money in this whole system. Mm-hmm. It's a complicated issue, yeah. for sure. Yeah. There are valid concerns about the influence of wealthy donors and special interests. Yeah. The great American political machine really gets into that, how the constant need for fundraising, it fuels this vast network of organizations from nonprofits to campaign teams, marketing agencies, media outlets, even legal and accounting firms. Wow. It's a massive economic ecosystem driven by this flow of money. Beyond politics, though. Yeah. It argues that while there are definitely concerns about potential corruption, and undue influence. Right. We need to recognize that the spending, it also has a significant positive economic impact. It's an interesting argument, isn't it? Like right. this thing that we criticize the amount of money in elections, it yeah. could be seen as a driver of economic growth. The source even compares it to the entertainment industry. Okay. Like we don't bat an eye at spending money on movies, concerts, sporting events, uh-huh. even though those things are arguably less consequential yeah. than choosing our leaders. It's thought-provoking. Mm-hmm. makes you re-examine what we think about political engagement right. and the role of money in a democratic society. It's not about saying wasteful spending is okay or ignoring potential corruption, but it's about understanding the complexities yeah. and having this nuanced view of the economic forces at play. Exactly. And having an informed debate about how to find that balance yeah. between the need for campaign financing And the importance of ensuring a fair and transparent process. You know, it's interesting. Both sources emphasize that this system, flawed as it might seem, Mm. it ultimately contributes to progress. It does. With all the partisan battles, the chaos of campaigning, it's easy to get lost in the negativity. Yeah. The great American political machine really puts it in perspective. It highlights how, despite all that noise, the system consistently delivers this peaceful transfer of power. Every four years, a new administration takes office, and the country keeps moving forward. It's like a ship navigating through stormy seas. Right. It might get tossed around, but it ultimately stays on course. Exactly. And that predictability, that's crucial, not just for political stability, but for economic growth, too, beyond politics. It emphasizes how businesses and investors, they thrive in environments where they can plan for the future with some degree of certainty. And that confidence ultimately translates into job creation and overall economic prosperity. So the argument is that this system, with its built-in mechanisms for resolving conflict, ensuring that smooth transition of power, it actually lays the groundwork for a more stable and prosperous society. Exactly. And this, the source even points out that the stability, it allows for progress on a broader societal level. Like when people aren't constantly worried about political upheaval or revolution, they're more likely to focus their energy on in- innovation, entrepreneurship, and building a better future. It creates an environment where risk-taking and long-term investments, they're more appealing. It makes you wonder, though, how the rise of social media and these online platforms, how might that reshape this system in the future? Hmm. Yeah, it is a big question. Both sources touch on this. It seems like a bit of a wild card. Beyond Politics explores how these platforms, they've already shown they can mobilize voters, spread information or misinformation, and even influence election outcomes. But what happens as technology keeps evolving at this crazy pace? It's a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. (laughs) On one hand, social media can give citizens a more direct voice in the process and level the playing field for candidates who might not have access to those traditional media outlets. But then on the other hand, it also creates opportunities for the spread of misinformation, Mm -hmm. manipulation of public opinion, even foreign interference in elections. Exactly. The great American political machine, 
suggest we need to find ways to use the power of these platforms for good. Yeah. While also safeguarding against their potential to undermine democratic processes. It's a huge challenge. It'll require careful consideration, technological innovation, maybe even some new regulations. For sure. <laughs> But ultimately, mm -hmm. it reminds us that this system is constantly evolving, yeah. adapting to new challenges, incorporating new technologies. And that brings us to a final thought for you, dear listener. As we've gone through the intricacies of this system, the economic impacts its potential future. What stand out to you? What questions are you left with? Because understanding this system, it's not just some academic exercise. It's about being an informed and engaged citizen. It's about recognizing the power you have as a voter. A participant in the democratic process and a contributor to the ongoing evolution of this whole experiment we call American democracy. So keep learning, keep questioning, and keep engaging in thoughtful discussions about how we can shape the future of this system and ensure that it continues to serve the needs of the American people. Thanks for diving deep with us today. We hope this exploration has sparked some new insights and inspired you to keep digging. Until next time, stay curious.